Hey, I'm back, America. And my friends and my family. I couldn't just leave it on that last note. We got more stuff to cover, man. And I got to go through. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just ram through this because uh, <laughs> it's amazing. All right, here's, here's an article. All my Detroit homies out there. Here's something for you guys. All right, and this came from... Um, uh, what was this? Uh, CNBC, Globalist Operation. Detroit to set services by neighborhood condition. Detroit neighborhoods with more people and a better chance of survival will receive different levels of city services that are or than more blighted areas under a plan unveiled Wednesday that some residents fear may pit them against each other for scarce resources. Mayor Dave Bing released details from his Detroit Works project calling the changes a short-term intervention necessary because the city with limited financial resources, a 155 million budget deficit, and a dwindling population was spread dangerously thin. And I quote, Dave Bing says, our focus is going to be on the people in the neighborhoods, Bing said. We can effect real change and improve neighborhoods. All right, folks, here we go. Straight out of the Obama playbook. Play to the people and then flip them over, no Vaseline, tack them from the back. You understand? This is how you fix the problems in Detroit. Okay, you ready for this? Tear down all the abandoned houses. Start gardening projects for the houses. Bring communities together. Bring back parks and recreation. And invest in families. Oh, but no. But no. We have to do the exact opposite. So, Dave B, he was a better basketball player than you were a mayor, cuz. Not to mention, you should just go talk to Kwame. Go to his cell, if he's there still, you know what I'm saying, and get some of that money back. Coleman Young, too. <laughs> I better stop going off on these fools, man. Article's in the description box. Read it for yourself. All right, next. What else is what else we got here? Oh, he, oh, this one shocked me today. Okay, now if everybody doesn't get outraged at this one here, you a plum clown. And yes, I said it. This here you go, my Fox New York. Pole dancing class for seven year old girls slammed. Okay, now here's the major quote out of this article that I, you have to understand. And this is this is America today, folks. Here's America. Okay. Uh. She said, and this is the teacher of the class, okay? Her name is Jess Leanne Norris, who teaches the youngsters instead that nothing rude is going on, okay? She said, what I teach is pole fitness, nothing else. I've never received any complaints. All right, folks. Now, anybody back in the day, if you remember, the President Physical Fitness Test, okay? The only thing done around the pole was out the pull-up bar, you know what I'm saying? And it's horizontal, and it's not connected to the ground or the ceiling. You see what I'm saying? So, uh, pole fitness for seven-year-olds, not to mention that they take photos of the seven-year-olds and then put them on Facebook. <laughs> oh, no, nothing's going, nothing's wrong, anyone. I mean, we're just teaching them how to be fit on the pole. <laughs> what? I'm supposed to believe that. I don't get it, man. And then you got parents. Hey, yeah, you know, my seven-year-old, she just goes to the pole fitness class, and she's in great shape. <laughs> you got a seven-year-old <laughs> seven stripper in training, cuz. <laughs> what? What is wrong with y'all, man, you bunch of fluoride heads? <laughs> hey, uh, that's like Afro, little, little Afro daughter coming around. She's like, Daddy, I want to go to the pole dancing class. <laughs> she'd be she'd be pole dancing on a grounded level. You see what I'm saying? Come at me with none of that business. Pole dancing for seven year olds. This is America nowadays. No wonder we screw it, cuz. No wonder we screw it. Read the article for yourself. Please comment back because this is insane. What else do we got here? <laughs> I can't believe that. Pole dancing for a seven year old. Gotta be out of your mind. <laughs> Got to be plumb crazy. Oh, my goodness. Oh, what else we got going on here? Hey, Michelle Obama. I heard that it's pretty good that uh, Happy Meals will be coming with apple slices now. Probably GMO. Thank you. Next. <laughs> goodness gracious. Uh, I just, I, it, is, it is just over the top. 
how about this? Here in Arizona, they do a lot of stuff with uh, big trucks. You know, it's you know, you know, it's cool to have a lifted truck and all of this heat. You know, and burn gas like that. Okay, so here's an article, right? <laughs> Woman gets jury trial for displaying plastic testicles on her truck. <laughs> I see this every day. I don't know what the problem is. And uh, this is uh, what is this? See, what is this? Live5news.com, right? <laughs> Woman gets jury trial for displaying plastic testicles on her truck. And this is in California. Don't you think you got more important things to do in California, like solve you, your economic problems? <laughs> Virginia Tice of, uh, if I'm, if I'm pronouncing this correctly, but now was given a $445 ticket July 5th that accuses her of violating the state's obscene bumper sticker law. First of all, it's not a bumper sticker, you know. <laughs> and if you want to talk about obscene, you know, 90% of all the porno comes out of California. What are you talking about, you know? <laughs> Police Chief Franco Fuda asked for a jury trial saying questions of obscenity should be determined by community standards. <laughs> what, you mean all the homeless folks? You mean all the broke people out there? <laughs> what a clown. She was ticketed after pulling into a gas station in her truck with big red fake testicles hanging from the trailer. <laughs> I see this every day in Arizona. It's not a big deal. What the, what the underlying factor is, is that revenue generation, folks. Revenue generation. I would love to go through all of the articles here on the Drudge Report. Man, this is a great source of some news for you guys. You don't have to sift through everything because they use all kinds of different sources. Um, and just to end this here, I got to talk about Reverend Al and Jesse Jackson. Okay? These two clowns seriously seriously get on my last nerve okay because obviously they're politicians okay Reverend now church of whatever or church of what church of where church of who church of where is this at anyway Reverend now man how come y'all never talk about Margaret Sanger you know how come you never talk about the all the Planned Parenthoods in in, in the black community how can you never really come to the defense of the black people unless it's for your political gain? Huh? Huh? Any any, any, any questions here? Let me let me Hey, uh call my phone real quick, please. I'm a, this is what I this is what we're we're hearing, you know, from uh Reverend Al and uh <laughs> and, and 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 Jesse Jackson. You know, you you calling my phone? Here, your phone's right here. Let me call my phone real quick. I want you to hear exactly what you, you're going to hear from, from these clowns upon. Uh, oh, are you talking to me? Yeah, I was, but, you know, you're doing, she's doing something. Don't mind her. She's a busy woman. Oh, thank you. That's how I like them. Okay, this this is what you hear when, when, when uh, you want to bring up real issues for Reverend Al and uh, Reverend Al and uh, Jesse. Yeah, crickets, everybody. You hear nothing but a bunch of crickets. They don't do nothing. Can't believe that we actually even look up to these guys. A bunch of clowns. What do you think about the, the Washington, D.C. circus? You know, shouldn't they travel around the nation? You know, all of them in a, under the, the big top, you know? Who, who, who would be the, what do you call it? What do you call the uh, master of ceremonies at the carnival? Or at the circus? The ringleader. The ringleader. Who would be the ringleader? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm like, come on, man. Hey, but the best news of the day. The NFL is going to play, everybody. You got to stay asleep. <laughs> I was hoping that they would not pass that business. But, you know, you got to gotta get that money. Because the sheep was broke as they are. They really want to come watch some people make it millions of dollars. <laughs> bunch of grown ass men worried about other men tossing a ball between each other and tackling each other and don't have a drop of water in the house you make me sick yeah and if I see you on the streets I'm gonna tell you it to your face trust me afro prepper I'll catch you all on the flip side peace <laughs>